Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Laura and today I'm doing the mid-year book freakout tag. Um, so basically I'm going to answer a bunch of questions about what my reading has been like so far for the beginning of the year. And because I mostly just read manga, um, I'm not going to answer with anything else besides manga. So I'm just going to change these questions slightly so that they suit the things that I read. Um, and I'll just get into it. Uh, the first question is the best book you've read so far, um, and that would be Shula Rune, uh, the girl from the other side, and I can't remember the author off the top of my head, um, a very sweet, slow, gentle type, uh, kind of a fairy tale-esque story about um, a girl who ends up uh, in sort of this area that's known as sort of a cursed area, and um, she's this uncursed, uh, very pure thing. Um, there's some interesting symbolism and stuff in it that is going to kind of reveal itself later in the story, but it's just got a very nice tempo. It's got really beautiful art, and it just has like this nice um, atmosphere to it that uh, I haven't read in a lot of manga, especially not this year, and I just really, really um, appealed to me. It just really, I really connected with this story. Um, so I'm looking forward to reading more of that, but that's definitely the thing that I think I would probably rate the highest for something new that I've read, because there's some things I probably would rate higher for things that I'm continuing reading, but that's certainly my favorite new thing that I've read. Uh, the sec second question is the best sequel you've read. That doesn't really apply to manga, so I'm going to skip on to question three. So question number three is a new release that you own but haven't read yet. Um, I'm going to go with Descending Stories by Haruko Kumota. I'm really interested in this one and I've heard lots of really good things about it and I think what I'm most intrigued about it is that um, it doesn't sound like a story that could be written here. It has to be have written in Japan. It's got, um, I think this the story and the plot and the ideas are really heavily intertwined with Japanese culture. That is uh, a bit of culture that I really am not very familiar with. So I'm really interested in finding out more about this title in particular. Uh, my most anticipated release for the next half of the year. That is question number four. Um, and easily I can answer that. That is Akira by Katsuhiro Otomo. I have been waiting for this re-release for a long, long time, and it is finally coming out, I think, October or November. I can't remember. Maybe it's August. Um, doesn't really matter. I have it pre-ordered and, you know, as soon as it's released it will be on my doorstep. So I've been waiting for a re-release of uh, Akira and uh, for the longest time we've had a um, flopped release, um, so reading in the English, uh, or yeah, English reading direction from left to right, and um, Kodansha has decided to re-release it in a box set, which is going to be massive. I don't know how they're going to do it. It's going to be a hardcover, apparently, and it's going to be an original Japanese reading direction, which is something we've never had since its original release in the, like, early 1980s. So this is something I'm very excited to own. There's still a particular release that I'm very interested in picking up of Akira, but at the same time, I don't own Akira. I've read it. I think it's beautiful, and I want to own it. I want to read it, and um, yeah, I'm just really excited to have this new release. I think it's going to be wonderful, and hopefully it's going to be the high quality that I'm kind of expecting of it. Uh, number five is your biggest disappointment, and that would have to go to Inio Asano in general, but A Girl on the Shore in particular, and I ended up reading this this year. Um, this is basically a very highly sexual graphic account of two youngsters who kind of are filling this thing that is missing in their lives. Um, so it's sort of like a coming-of-age tale through ex uh, sexual ex exploration or exploration between these two two kids and uh, it's, it's not something I want to read, it's not something I want to see and uh, I'm really disappointed actually in Vertical for bringing this over. I, in one hand, you know, I don't agree with uh, censorship but on the other hand I also agree with protecting of minors and despite the fact that these are drawn, this is not something that should have made it into English, so I'm really disappointed in this. I've been reading a little bit more of Inuyasha Asano. I am not sort of finding redemption in, in Asano's other works, um, and I was really looking forward to this. Um, I was looking forward to reading more Asano because the very first work which I had read, which was What a Wonderful World, I'd read a few years ago. I don't remember it very much, but I remember it just being 
like such an emotional ride for me and I was so connected to that story and I was I was certain that this was going to be an author that I was going to connect with all of their works and uh, that is truly not going to be the case and I'm going to have to now reread uh, What a Wonderful World and reevaluate my first impressions of that and not only that I still have two other works that I haven't read by Asano that I own that I have to read because I cannot be in my collection and me not read it like that is not how I collect I have to read all the things in my collection so this unfortunately is just like kind of broke my heart that I would have to hate an Asano work so much um, because it really throws my judgment off of this author like way off of off the charts um, in the opposite direction so I probably will not pick up any more Asano works thanks to this uh, question number six is your biggest surprise, and that has to go to Please Tell Me Gakko-chan by Kenya Suzuki. Now, I, uh, my sister picked this up, and we just thought that this was something that probably needed to be in the collection because it was so unique, um, especially the art style and sort of some of the formatting style. It's not something that we have in our collection um, up until this point. It wasn't necessarily something that either of us thought we would really like, but we thought that it was unique enough that we wanted to own it. And uh, I did end up reading it, and I liked it a lot. I thought it was uh, a lot of fun. Um, definitely very earthy and body, but it's just, it's funny, and it, it feels more true to life than a lot of other kind of comedy series. This is basically the story about a couple of friends in high school and um, they're very short stories, they're like page stories. They're a little bit like a yon coma or four coma uh, in that way, but the formatting is slightly different. Um, and basically at the beginning of the, the story or the page, um, they're asked a question, and it'll be something like, um, are donut-shaped cushions popular even with high school girls? Is it true that if you eat too much spicy food, your anus will pay for it later? Like, they're not, you know, they're they're pretty... Uh, body type questions. Um, is it true that for girls every morning is a battle with their hair, clothes, and makeup? Like, they're just sort of like common questions that people might be curious about, at least if you're a teenager. Um, and there are things that you would probably ask to like your closest friends and just like chat about. Um, and so basically it's, uh, it kind of starts, uh, Galco chan you can see it's the girl here on the cover, um, and she's, you know, she's a uh, very kind of like pretty girl who's into makeup and she's very voluptuous and you would think that she's you know very uh, used to boys and sex and and all of those things but she's actually very kind of timid and and shy and inexperienced and so it's mostly her other friends asking questions and like um, making up ideas about what what her reactions would be and her being incredibly embarrassed by them like it's just like super silly um, and then at the same time like uh, as the questions being asked. Um, so you can see that it's got full color pages, but um, all of the friends actually answer these questions um, here in the column. So you get to see what the reactions of any of the characters would be um, for all of these questions. It's just, it's weird, but it's really, really fun. And, um, you know, if, if this sounds appealing to you at all, I would highly recommend it because it's, it's fun. Um, yeah, and it's really a unique, different kind of manga. Uh, question number seven is a favorite new author. Um, I mostly read authors that I've already read before or, you know, I've read something by an author but it doesn't intrigue me enough to pick up more by that particular author. Um, so I wouldn't say that this is necessarily a favorite author but this is an author that, uh, it's the first time I've read them is this year and I'm curious to pick up more of their works to decide if they are going to be a favorite author and um, that would happen to be Asumiko Nakamura. I ended up reading Utsubara, The Story of a Novelist. Um, really um, beautifully illustrated, uh, let's see, beautiful uh, illustrated manga, Jose manga. Um, and the story is really mysterious and intriguing. And uh, I just really, really enjoyed this manga um, quite a lot. I'm interested in picking it up again because there were a lot of like twists and turns in it um, and clues to sort of how the, the story kind of solves itself. So I'm interested in trying this one again and I'm really interested in seeing more from this author because, um, you know, this isn't enough of a taste to decide if they're going to be a favorite author, but their art was beautiful, their storytelling was great, and um, it was just an enjoyable read overall. So uh, yeah, I'm really, I'm really interested in this author so far. 
Uh, question number eight is newest fictional crush, and I've been enjoying watching um, booktubers' answers to this because a lot of people are like, I don't get fictional crushes, but I think that's one of the things that is like a mainstay of my community, or the manga community, the anime community, is that um, readers and consumers of the media get crushes on their characters. Um, so um, probably the big crush that I have acquired this year, maybe it was just sort of a reminder that I have a crush on a character, um, I don't have a picture, so I'll, I'll put one up on the screen, but it was uh, from Galaxy Express 3.9. Um, and that's Captain Harlock. Um, you know, there isn't really a Captain Harlock manga out. I think um, Seven Seas has licensed one, and um, I'm really, really looking forward to reading that. I think it's going to be wonderful. Um, Captain Harlock doesn't do anything in this manga. Uh, basically, he shows up on a ship, and he's like, Hi there, I'm on my ship. Look how cool I am. And then he leaves. He is completely useless in this manga doesn't help out in any situation. He basically is like, hey, I'm here, and then leaves. And he does that a couple of times in the series, but I'm just like, oh, I really like Captain Harlock. And I think it's probably because I watched the anime like a million years ago, and um, I, you know, had a crush on him then. It just sort of reminded me how much I liked him, and so even just seeing him for like a second in the series, like just, you know, yeah, it, it rekindled that, that flame. Um, yeah, so definitely Captain Harlock. Uh, number nine is your favorite or newest favorite character, and that would come from Yukarism, um, the main lead male character, Yukari. Um, he is an author who um, basically he recreates the historical uh, Japan's historical past in his writings. He's a historical writer, even though he's only seventeen. He's written many, you know. Um, top bestseller books because he's got this skill in writing and basically what it is is not so much that he is a good writer is that he can remember his past life and so what he's doing is he's basically just recreating his past life on paper and uh, there's a couple people of course who read his works and they feel so connected with it because they too had a past life that was very similar to his and so they find sort of a connection with it um, so there's a couple people in particular who have a very close tie to his past self and they actually knew each other in the past life and they end up showing up kind of on his doorstep but they don't know anything about the past life they just have a connection it's only him who really remembers the past life and so a bunch of things are happening and a bunch of things are going on and the the characters like the past self characters are sort of um, making an appearance on these modern characters and uh, like things are just going crazy and the boy, Yukari, is just like sitting back and just having a ball. He thinks it's the greatest thing ever. And um, I just really like that type of character. I like someone who can kind of appreciate what's going on and just sort of like laugh at himself and, and enjoy the thing. Um, so I really like that. Like rather than telling them like what was going on, he just sort of sat back and enjoyed it. I really like that. So um, I would say that he's probably my favorite character for the year but there's lots of good characters. Number 10 is a book that made you cry, and that is No Competition, Volume 13 of Real by Takehiko Inoue. I don't know if this is going to make anybody else cry. I definitely was in a place to cry. Like, I had recent death in the family. I was already, like, really practicing crying the month that I was crying for this, but I probably have never cried so hard as I did for this volume for anything else in my entire life. I think I almost died. Like, I just couldn't, I couldn't even get air in anymore. Yeah. It was that bad. Um, so this is basically the story about a number of different young men who all, actually, and, and a young woman, who all have uh, different levels and experience with um, some sort of paralysis. And this particular volume deals with a pro wrestler who had a back injury and he's trying to make a comeback. It was like, why am I crying so much over wrestling? Like, not my thing at all, but it was just like you know, heartbreaking and then heartwarming all the same time. <laughs> so yeah, just, I just lost it for this volume and, um, yeah. It, it, Takehiko, Takehiko Inoue is wonderful to begin with, um, you know, and I did have that added bonus of, like, having really on-edge feelings during time that I was reading this, but, um, yeah, this one is probably the greatest cry I have ever had in my entire life. Uh, number 11 is a book that made you happy, 
and it would go to this volume of My Darling Miss Bancho by Mayo Fujikata. Um, this is the only volume that was released. It was published by CMX, which of course has gone defunct. Um, but this is just a silly, stupid shoujo manga, and it's just like stupid in such a wonderful way. And I loved it, and I laughed out loud, and I laughed heartily at it, and it was just great. Um, basically, it's about a girl who decides to go to a new school, only to find out that the school that she's enrolled in is the school where all of the thugs go, um, or the kind of the Yankee type kids go. Um, and it's mostly, I think it's an all boys school, and basically there's a rule at the school that um, they're, you know, whoever is uh, the leader of the school has to defeat all these other, like, leaders of the class or whatever. Um, so she ends up going to the school as the only girl in this very tough school, and she ends up accidentally defeating um, the leader of the school. And so now she has become the leader of the school. And it is just, it's so silly and stupid and funny and wonderful, and, like, I loved it to death. Um, yeah, if you like really silly shoujo comedy. This is a great one if you can find it, but it's only one volume and that's disappointing. Number 12 is your favorite book to film adaptation and I'm gonna go with anime and the only anime I have actually watched this year or I've actually watched one and a couple episodes of another um, but I didn't like those couple of episodes so the only watch anime that I watched to completion is the Monthly Girls Nozaki-kun by Izumi Tsubaki uh, anime. Um, I thought this was really fun to watch. I thought it was a lot of just like a really fun, silly uh, story, but um, I always think that about gag manga. I think that it's always going to be better in anime, no matter what, um, if you're not from the culture that the comedy is coming from, because comedy is so hard to translate to begin with, and then to translate it into static images, um, especially in this gag format, is just not as uh, conducive to comedy, I think, than uh, motion. Um, so I think that uh, anime um, anime of any type of formatted comedy, like gag manga, um, or four coma or yon coma manga, are are going to be better. It's just this natural thing that's going to happen. Um, but I really did enjoy it, and I definitely will be picking up more of the manga to read. Um, it, but it is again, it's it's harder for me to read through uh, yon coma manga because it's it is a little bit. Uh, stilted, and I don't have like the the cultural um, subtleties of the comedy that um, I would have if I had grown up in that culture. So um, it is a little bit harder for me, in my opinion, to read than it is to watch. Uh, number thirteen is your favorite uh, review or video that you filmed, um, and that would easily go to the uh, video that I did with uh, Ray from Whimsical Pictures and G from Simply G, um, where all three of us posted a video talking about five female authors of shonen or seinen manga. Um, I think it's just it's interesting to uh, talk about um, authors. I think that that don't get kind of noticed or recognized, and so um, I think that a lot of, I, you know, generally when you're reading a male demographic manga, you aren't even thinking, hey, this is a, a, a woman writing this, and um, I, you know, it's, it adds a unique flavor to that manga, and, you know, these are good authors that I think are just underappreciated, underrepresented, under talked about, so I thought it was a, a nice video to do, and I had fun um, exploring some of these authors with the two of them while we were on Twitter, you know, we chatted about things, and it was just, um, you know, we were all telling different authors that we knew that were writing these these demographics, and I learned about authors that I hadn't even heard of uh, or didn't realize were were women writing for these demographics. So um, I learned a lot, and it was just fun to put that together. So yeah, I will definitely link um, all three of our videos in the description below if you're interested in checking that out. Uh, number fourteen is the most beautiful book that you have acquired this year, um, and that's going to go to Yuichi Yokoyama works. Um, I ended up picking up Garden and uh, I can't remember what the other one is called. I, um, it's in my sister's room so I'm not going to show it to you because I think she's currently reading it but it um, you can see here like it's just it's just really uh, unique for a manga. It's got a very um, avant-garde or um, surrealist uh, type um, illustration. It's got this very white cover with uh, pink illustrations. They're just like, um, you know, it's very simple and clean and you can take the dust jacket off 
Um, and then underneath is a, a really beautiful cover. Um, you can see here it kind of looks like, um, uh, I don't know, Russian Expressionists or something uh, type painting. Um, just very, very beautiful. And the, the illustration too is is very unique and kind of trippy and really, really cool. It looks more like fine arts than it does um, kind of uh, commercial storytelling. Like it's it's going to be such a unique experience to read and um, yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to it. It's just like it's so beautiful. Um, at least it's really, really beautiful to me. It's so unique to manga, especially cover design to manga. Um, and uh, I'm just really glad to have it. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to pick up everything um, by this publisher, and the publisher has gone defunct as far as I know, um, so um, it's going to be hard to get my hands on, on the rest of Yokoyama's works um, in English, but I'm, yeah, really, really looking forward to uh, reading them, but also owning them just because they're so pretty, um, at least they are to me. So number 15 is What Do You Need to Read by the End of the Year? Uh, nothing. I don't need to read anything. Um, but I have a heck of a lot on my shelves that I would like to read, and I like to read a lot. And I have set my Goodreads goal at 750 volumes, and I'm just slightly over 300. I'm like 90 volumes behind schedule, so I would really like to achieve that number. But if I don't achieve it, I don't feel any pressure about it. I just like to try. Um, I'm, I'm not the type who gets super stressed out, like, you know, someone sees a deadline, they get really stressed out. I'm just like, uh, well, I'll just hand it in late. Like, I'm, I've never been... I'm really uptight about that kind of thing. I've, I've never thought it was worth my stress, so like, I don't have any, any concerns about whether or not I read something in time. Um, I would really like to read uh, the rest of my 2016 releases. I'd like to continue on with my shelf reading, you know, reading uh, the titles on specific shelves, and I would like to continue posting videos, and I do feel like, you know, posting videos helps me to continue to read. Um, before the current readathon that I'm currently doing, which is the Maga readathon, I hadn't read almost in a month, and that was kind of weird and kind of creepy for me because I normally read at least, you know, every other day, if not every day, so um, it's a little bit strange when I don't read, but, you know, sometimes you just need a break, and it's not a big deal, and I don't need to read it, so, um, but I certainly do feel like I need to collect it, and that's a whole different question. Um, so anyway, <laughs> that's my mid-year book freakout tag, or manga freakout tag. Um, I wasn't tagged by anyone, obviously, and uh, if you want to do this, feel free, although the mid-year is quickly coming to a close, so you might want to get on it if that is something you're interested in doing. Anyway, thank you so much for watching my video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now!